Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is an Amazon Kindle Fire, the original version which came out in 2011, and it has a 7 inch 1024 by 600 pixel display, a TI OMAP dual core processor, and it normally runs a version of Google Android 2.3 Gingerbread, but now there's a version of Android 4.2 Jelly Bean which is available for it. This is an unofficial update, doesn't come from Amazon. Uh, you may void your warranty or run into troubles if you uh, try installing it, but for the most part everything seems to work pretty well and it turns this tablet into a pretty much full-fledged Android tablet. There's no camera, so you can't take pictures, you can't make phone calls or do some other things that you could do with an Android smartphone. But uh, for the most part things seem to be working here, including audio, video, and uh, games and so forth. So let's take a quick look at some of the things you can do. Um, we've got the web browsers up and running. It seems pretty smooth, pretty fast. We've got notifications, settings. You can see here that it is running Google Android 4.2. This is actually 4.2.1, even though it says 4.2. And this is uh, from Hashcode, who is a developer at the XDA Developers Forum, has been uh, porting all sorts of operating systems to run on this for, uh, for a while. So even though the tablet's a little bit over a year old at this point, um, it's uh, it's still pretty versatile and runs a lot of different applications. And you can pick it up relatively inexpensively these days, too. You can sometimes find refurbished models going for around $100. Uh, that's because Amazon now charges $159 for the second generation Kindle, or about $199 for the Kindle Fire HD. Uh, those have faster processors, newer software, uh, some of them have higher resolution displays. But if you are cool with the uh, 1024 by 600 pixel display, Videos look pretty good on this. In that it's an ultrabook, it's less than an inch thick. Uh, just real quickly check and see which power mode you're on. You just tap the power button. Netflix works as well. Sometimes it takes a moment for things to load, but once the uh, videos are playing, they look pretty good. We got a little bit of glare here, so it's a little hard to see, but things are looking pretty good. And uh, video games work pretty well, too. Now, I'm not very good at some of these video games, but I'll just uh, show you that it does play. mention that I'm not very good at these. There we go. Okay, well before I get shot by zombies, let's take a quick look at uh, some of the other things. Uh, we've got access to the Google Play Store. It's running the Android Jelly Bean applications. Um, there are a couple of things that aren't working yet as of December 15th. Uh, that includes, while the uh, the keyboard works, it doesn't support the uh, Android 4.2 swipe style, uh, dragging your fingers from key to key. Um, so right now you just sort of have to enter text the old-fashioned way, one letter at a time. And the uh, battery life is not stellar because this particular build uh, doesn't allow for deep sleep. And what that means is that um, basically if you turn off the screen on most tablets, uh, very little happens and uh, the battery doesn't really run down. Battery is still running down now even though the screen is off. So uh, you're not going to get the same kind of long battery life and you're going to want to probably plug this in charge it when you're not using it. But if you want to go ahead and use Android 4.2 Jelly Bean on a uh, tablet that you can pick up for a little over $100 these days, you could probably do a lot worse. Um, that's really 
you know, for the most part, those are those are the functions that aren't available. Um, you know, there's no hardware volume keys, which uh, means that you have to go into the software settings to adjust the volume. That's something that's always been a little bit annoying about uh, Kindles. Um, and then, of course, the biggest reason that you might be reluctant to uh, to change is because um, you know you can run into trouble if you. Uh, if it's kind of hard to turn this into a brick, but if you do something wrong, you could sort of wind up in a state where it's difficult to figure out how to turn the thing back on and get it to uh, to operate at all. Um, if you're okay with taking those risks, though, um, installing Android 4.2 does make it a pretty versatile tablet. And you can always just install the Amazon Kindle application from the Android market uh, or the Google Play Store and uh, read books on it too if you want to. Um, you do lose the ability to use Amazon's instant video streaming and you don't have the ability to access Amazon's uh, Kindle owner's lending library if you're not running the official Kindle software. Um, eventually we may see Amazon extend those to other platforms. For instance, the Amazon Instant Video app is available for the iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch but not for Android devices other than the Kindle Fire at this point. So if you want to be able to take advantage of those features, you're going to want to stick with Amazon stock software. If you want long battery life, you might want to stick with Amazon stock software for now, um, or a different version of Android. But uh, it's pretty cool that you can run Jelly Bean, the uh, latest Android software, on this inexpensive tablet. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and just wanted to give you a quick overview of uh, what Android 4.2 looks like on the Kindle Fire, first generation.